Hi everyone! Today we're going to be learning about Helanthus mollus lamb, otherwise known as the downy sunflower, the hairy wild sunflower, and the ashy sunflower. Ashy sunflower is a herbaceous perennial that grows to be about 0.5 to 1 meter tall. This species is incredibly valuable to wildlife as birds, large and small mammals, and livestock all benefit from the seeds and foliage that this species produces. Ashy sunflower is also known to increase forb diversity and prevent erosion. Additionally, this species has medicinal uses. The leaves have been used to reduce fever and the stem has been used to treat malaria. Now, if we take a look at a distribution map of ashy sunflower, we'll see that it's native to the central and eastern United States, as well as parts of Canada. However, this species can be quite aggressive under certain conditions and outcompete other species by forming dense stands of itself. Nonetheless, as long as you keep a watchful eye on it, it can make a great garden species. And if you're wanting to add it to your landscape, it grows well in hardiness zones three through nine. As far as soil conditions go, ashy sunflower grows well in well-trained soils, but it can also tolerate poor soil conditions and low pH. If we think about what sorts of habitats ashy sunflower might be found in, full sun habitats are ideal because, duh, it's a sunflower, not a shade flower. This species can be found in prairies, savannas, woodland openings, or on roadsides. Sandy soils are typically the go-to for this species because they are well-drained. Now, if we take a look at the stem of an ashy sunflower, the first thing that we should notice is that it is densely pubescent, which gives the stem and leaves a grayish tint, hence the name ashy sunflower. We also may notice that the leaf arrangement is opposite and the leaves themselves attach directly to the stem, so they are sessile. If we take a closer look at the leaves, we'll see that they are simple and toothed. We also want to note again that the leaves themselves are pubescent. When it comes to the main attraction of ashy sunflower, which is the flower head itself, it blooms July to September. When it does, it produces 15 to 30 yellow ray florets, which are individual sterile flowers. At the same time, it forms many fertile disc florets that make up the center of the head. Since you might still be skeptical, let's take a closer look at one of the disc florets. Each disc floret of an ashy sunflower has five petals, five brown stamen, two fused pistils, and two sepals. The disc florets on the outside closest to the ray flowers bloom first, and when blooming, ashy sunflower attracts bees, butterflies, and flies. Now, if we take a look at the underside of an ashy sunflower, we'll notice that it has small leaf-like structures that look like sepals. Those are the filaries. The filaries of an ashy sunflower are short, curly, and pubescent. After pollination, all of the disc florets of ashy sunflower start to form echines that are dispersed by birds and mammals that may carry the seed. Also, ashy sunflowers reproduce heavily through underground rhizomes. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about Helanthus mollus, otherwise known as the ashy sunflower with me. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in my next video.